Hello everyone, my name is Anatoly Latayev and I'm the founder of Migronis. This is Antigua, one of the countries that sells citizenship by investment. There are three ways to buy a passport here. The first one is a non-refundable payment to the government, or in other words, a donation to a government fund. The second one is investing in real estate or business. So we work pretty much exclusively with as it were, second home, third home type properties or CIP properties. Um, in that regard, um, the property market tends to be very steady because no one really needs a property in Antigua. It's not like you're living in London and you move out of one house and you buy another house. In general, they are second, third, fourth, fifth homes. So people don't need them. So they buy because they want to. Um, and they might want a return on investment, but they're not necessarily in a position that they have to make a return on investment. Because of that, fluctuations in the market and the world economy don't have as big an impact on the property prices. They probably affect the sales volume more than they affect the prices. If you've bought something for half a million and you've got three million in the bank, the economy might be going down for five years, but I say to you, do you want to sell it for 200,000? You're like, no, I don't need to. I've got lots of money. I don't need to sell it. I'll hold on to it. So in general, although after the sort of um, financial crash, the volume of properties sold went down, so it was difficult to liquidate, the actual total price of the property didn't really go up. Generally, it goes up steadily anywhere between two and six percent a year average. Um, it depends where you are and it depends on what's going on around you. Demand for Caribbean property is growing quickly and this is first and foremost due to the growing numbers of tourists in the Caribbean. More international airports have popped up here. A new airport opened in Antigua in 2015 and Antigua now hosts direct flights from London as well as a few hubs in the US, Canada and Germany. It's pretty simple to get here, and to quote a statistic, more than 300,000 tourists came to Antigua in 2018. On top of that, that number doesn't include people who came here on cruise liners. How does Antigua stand apart from other programs? The first difference is that only Antigua's program requires you to fly to the island and spend five days here within the first five years. Furthermore, Antigua is of 2020 the most advantageous program for families of four. Its only drawback is its relatively long review period, at least if we're talking about 2018-19, but it's possible that this will change in the near future. A hundred thousand, probably not a lot. Um, you might be able to get, you might be able to, if you were really lucky and you were, you might be able to get a, a one bedroom somewhere near Rainforest. <laughs> realistically, realistically, you want to start 200. For 200,000, you could get a two-bedroom, uh, thousand-square-foot property with um, dock space on the water. It's a single house. They're um, uh, part of a, a block, so you have a block of say six or eight houses. Um, you'll have a thousand square foot in the middle or on the end. You're you're on the water, so you've got the dock space. And it's not new um, development. No, well, that's in Jolly Harbour. So you can pick those up because the houses in Jolly Harbour are anywhere between 35, 40 years old. A lot of them need a bit of work. Uh, because they need a little bit of work, some people go, well, I don't want to put the money in. So you can pick them up cheaper. Um, so the sum selling for sort of 175, 195 US. And they're good properties. They get, they get a good volume of visitors coming in. So uh, you can get a good return on investment. There's a number of property management companies. So we have a property management company, but there's a number to choose from. So it generally makes it quite easy if you're going to buy at the 200 level to just go in, buy your property. Here's what you can do for half a million? Half a million, you're probably looking, um, generally half a million is more the citizenship by investment or CIP, as it tends to get called in Antigua. So you're probably looking uh, in a de de development resort because the, the threshold is at 400,000. So half a million, normally you're looking at more, I suppose, modern hotel type complexes, which will be sort of fully serviced, fully managed. 
and effectively brand new. And you may have guaranteed returns, etc., etc. And they are purely because of the price point, they're mainly positioned so towards CIP. A lot of options um, for this price. Yeah, at that price, yeah, but generally there will be newer builds. If um, you're talking about some great single house, luxury one with a great view, with some. Uh, okay, so then probably then there's a jump to about. There's a, there's a, there's a, a, a smallish section of properties um, which will be on the water, uh, but not probably not sunset view, but they'll probably have a big, uh, big waterfront. Uh, they won't be beachfront, but they're about a million. You'll get three bedroom, maybe 3,000 square foot, or two and a half thousand square foot. Then if you jump up again, you would look at something like Sugar Ridge, uh, starting at about 1.8 to let's say three million. And it's all managed? Um, if you want it to be. So Sugar Ridge has got fantastic views all across the west coast. It's high up on a hill, um, three, four bedrooms, 3,000 square foot, pool, deck, terrace, garden, 24-7 um, security, all of that. If you then go up again, you can then have four or five bedrooms on the beach, three and a half to 5,000 square foot. You've got sunset views on the beach. You've got dock to the rear, which is quite rare in the Caribbean to have beach and dock at the same property, but Jolly Harbour has it. Um, so yeah, that kind of gives you a, a sort of selection, but quite often people sort of say, well, I want, I want to be on the beach, but I don't want to spend a million, which is possible. However, you might have to build yourself, which we do have we do have a, a, a well-structured system for people who do want to build. So if you came along and you said, I've got a million dollars, I really want to be on the beach and I want to see the sunset, we can arrange that, although you would have to go through the, the, the build process. It is your own project. Yeah, effectively, but what we would do, I mean, we, we, have, um, we work with a number of contractors, so they can give you a turnkey service and they would build everything for you. And they're good, you know, it's high quality builds. Um, you know, it's, it's like- How long does it take to- Probably, if it was fast, nine months, but it depends how organized you are. So quite often people design their house and then they want to spend three months changing it, moving doors, changing things around. They want to visit the site, they come back. So that tends to delay things. But if you were going to build two and a half, three thousand square foot, you would probably be looking anywhere between nine months and 14 months from beginning to end. In general, we have a, a well-structured construction industry here. You only have to look around in the past 10 years to see what's happened. I mean, where we're sitting now, you know, has, has come up in the last 10 years. Sugar Ridge, a lot of that's been built in the last 10 years. Um, Nonsuch Bay, a lot of that's the last 10 years. Tamarin Hills, a lot of that's the last 10 years. So there's a lot of contractors and there's a lot of builds going on. If you look at the, the South Beach in Jolly Harbour, that used to have uh, vacant plots, maybe a, a third of them or a quarter of them are empty. And now I think, I think there's one out of 26. Um, 26, 27. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of construction going on. If most of the demand three to five years ago was coming from the government donation option, by which I mean the process where you pay the whole non-refundable sum to certain government funds, nowadays more and more investors are preferring to buy real estate. According to the Citizenship Agency on St. Kitts, more than 75% of investors chose to purchase real estate in 2018 and 19. The situation is similar on the other islands. And where is this all coming from? Well, it starts from the fact that there is a lot more trust emerging regarding properties. Because there are real estate developers with globally recognized names coming in. People with established experience in bringing properties onto the market, not just in the Caribbean, but around the world. Furthermore, global brands have appeared here. So you can buy a share in big hotel chains such as Hyatt, Four Seasons, and so on. The demand for real estate is growing in connection to all of this. This is the biggest advantage of investing in real estate. Firstly, you receive an annual return of anywhere from 1 to 5% depending on the property you choose. Secondly, after 3, 5 or 7 years, again depending on the program, you can sell the property and the person who buys it after you will have the right to receive citizenship. Naturally, you get to keep your passport. This is what we mean when we say a secondary real estate market is emerging in the Caribbean one that adheres to the standards of passport programs. Because not all real estate on the island pertains to the passport program. Only those specific properties that have been approved by the government do. As of today, there are about more than 130 properties across the five Caribbean islands.
It depends really what people are looking at. So for example, we do get, occasionally we get investors coming in to say they want to do a, a sort of ground up project. They want to buy the land and then they want to build. Now, you could probably get a piece of land for anywhere between two and five million and build it up. Obviously, you need to meet the right contractor, go through them, get the right architects, have your plans structured. Um, but you could do that for, say, six million, and that would give you the highest uplift. Obviously, you get other people come in and they want to buy uh, an already going concern, and they want it built, they want it operating. Obviously, the uplift is probably going to be less, but obviously, you've already got revenue coming in, so that's a safer bet. But um, yeah, if you want to invest in a business, we get uh, restaurateurs coming in to look at restaurants and they will, they don't change hands often, but um, yeah, we have businesses for sale. A restaurant might cost you half a million, um, depending on where it was location wise, uh, depending on if it was making money. And um, what about demand of uh, on real estate here? Uh, demand generally has picked up over the last, obviously uh, where the financial crash, that pretty much stopped most properties being sold. I think it was a bit of a calm patch. It continued to build up um, through into about 2016. Uh, Brexit caused a slowdown from the UK because obviously there's a lot of ambiguity in the market and when people aren't sure what's happening they tend not to, to buy. The holidays didn't change which was good so effectively still had lots of UK holiday makers um, and but we probably had more of uh, the US market proportionally looking at buying property. Now, obviously that's behind us. Um, we are getting a lot of interest. So rather oddly, since um, kind of the UK Parliament had a, a majority and things are moving forward, we are getting a lot more inquiries on terms of sales. So depending on where you buy, because there's, we have small developments, um, you might get lucky and find your dream house instantly. You might also think, well, actually, they're all sold and I'm not sure what to do. There's development going on all the time. Um, the real estate market in general is, is, I would say it's steady and robust. It's not, it's not booming. You know, it's, it's not somewhere that you, you know, you'll put a property on the market and within a week it sells. But it's not like a flat in London. London. But if you compare with another Caribbean islands like, um, I don't know, St. Kitts, Barbados. Oh, in, in in the so region? In the region, um, we're probably the strongest behind Barbados. So Barbados has a very strong real estate market. They've got higher population and they're slightly ahead in terms of what they've sold. The big advantage that we have in Antigua is you can get a lot more for your money. So if you want to spend half a million, you could probably get a third of an acre on the beach facing the sunset and then you could build a house for 500,000. If you try to do that in Barbados, you're going to get a shoebox, you know, five roads back from the water and you're not even going to be even within, you know, 500 meters of the beach. It's a very, very good time to invest in Antigua because we've got a good development market in terms of we have a good number of contractors. The CIP has put quite a lot of capital injection into effectively uh, upskilling all of those contractors. So we've got quite a good skill base, but a lot of Antigua's not yet developed. So therefore, it's not a case of I've got to buy something 500 meters from the sea, you can still buy land on the beach. Whereas if you go to Barbados, you can't buy land on the beach. If you said I want to buy six acres on the beach, I can help you out with that, no problem. If you want to do that in Barbados, they're just going to laugh at you and say, well, what hotel do you want to buy? And you'd be looking at 30 million, and I'd be asking for five or six. In general, there's more variety in terms of properties um, in that area, mainly because it's the West Coast. Because of the number of beaches, um, in, in certain respects, if you look on, say, you can easily see it, if you look on Google Earth, um, on the east side, it's very dark blue, and on the west side, it's all kind of turquoise blue. And there's just, there's just sand for miles, 30 miles out, there's just a, you know, a big bank of sand. So there's a lot of beaches, as a result, there's more hotels. As a result, more hotels. There's more restaurants, there's more bars. Because there's more bars and restaurants, there's more development, there's more houses. So you've got more choice. So if, if you wanted to buy an acre on the seafront on the East Coast, then yeah, I mean, you're, you're, if you looked at Jolly Harbour and you said, I want to buy an acre in Jolly Harbour, then you're talking three, four million an acre, if you could even get it. You'd more be looking at buying a third of an acre. Um, if you went to the East Coast, you're looking at, you know, 200,000 an acre. 
um, just because obviously that's outside of a development but there's not as many developments on the east coast um, because unless you've got a protected bay like non such bay is well protected um, but other than that most of it's quite rough. I hope that this video was useful to you and if you'd like to find out more about real estate in the Caribbean click the links in the description underneath the video. You'll find a lot of materials there on Caribbean real estate as well as citizenship programs. Post your questions in the comments and subscribe to our channel. See ya!